What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another V-Ray for SketchUp tutorial for you. So in this video, I just wanted to give you a quick run through of how you can resize and place V-Ray materials within your SketchUp model. If you're liking these V-Ray tutorials, these rendering tutorials, make sure you click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, I just wanted to give a quick overview of how you can position and resize V-Ray's materials within your SketchUp model. So one of the things that's going to be really important is the scale of your materials within your renderings. Because if the scale is wrong and the textures are too big or too small, then your rendering isn't going to look right. So in this case, I'm just going to use a very simple example. I'm not going to do anything with lighting or anything like that. I will link to some tutorials about lighting down below because those are going to affect the way your materials look as well. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a face within SketchUp. So, and what I'm going to do is I just drew a rectangle using the rectangle tool. I'm just going to reverse this face so the front face is facing up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our V-Ray Asset Editor. And if you remember, the V-Ray Asset Editor is where you can come in and add V-Ray materials to your model. So you have your materials list right here. And when you first pull this up, it may look more like this. But this is your materials section of your Asset Editor. And if you click the little arrow off to the left here, it's going to give you a list of V-Ray materials that you can bring into your model. And so I think recently I've been doing a lot with brick. Let's go ahead and do something with some wood planks. So we're just gonna go down to the wood and laminate section um, of your V-Ray categories list. And you can scroll through and you can really pick any of these. Um, in this case, I'm gonna pick something a little less brown than I usually go with. So maybe this, um, We'll go with this Flooring Parquet Parallel G01. And so the first thing we need to do to bring that into our SketchUp model is we need to add it to our scene because right now that doesn't actually appear in our model, in our materials list. And so to do that, you can just right click on this and click Add to Scene. What that's gonna do is that's gonna add this material to your material list. And so um, I've gotten different reports from different people. Um, for me, when I do this, when I click Add to Scene, this adds this to my materials within my model. So if I go to the materials section of my tray, click the drop down and click in model, this shows up in here. Um, it hasn't always appeared for everyone. I'm not really sure what's driving that. You might be able to click this little arrow and you can't really see it from here. Maybe if I drag this over, you may be able to click this arrow and click refresh in the in model section and maybe it'll show up then. But even if it doesn't show up, what you can do is you can apply this to your model um, using the V-Ray Asset Editor. So all you wanna do is just select the face that you wanna apply this to right click on it and click apply material to selection. And so now I'm gonna kind of minimize the V-Ray asset editor and we're gonna focus on what happens to this material when it gets brought into SketchUp. So when this gets brought into SketchUp, this basically creates a new material within SketchUp that you can edit. And the first thing you're gonna notice, and this is my default model and I left that in there just to give you an idea of scale. So this is a real world scale, so I'm about 5'11". So this gives you kind of a reference point which is why I leave my default model in for a while. But you can see how this floor, um, these wood pieces are far too small and you're getting kind of a tiling effect within um, SketchUp. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into the edit tab of our materials section and we wanna adjust the size. And so to adjust the size, you go to the edit tab and you look down in the texture section down below and you can see what that has is that tells you the size of the material that it's tiling within SketchUp. So it's basically taking this texture image and it's tiling it over and over again. And that's a very pronounced right here because it's way too small. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're just going to adjust the size of the texture image. So in this case, I'm going to start off and I'm going to go to 36 inches. And so you can see how when I take this to 36 inches, this immediately looks a lot better, a lot more um, like the size is proper in here. So um, just by taking that size up, this looks more realistic. And depending on how large you think these wood pieces are gonna be, you can adjust that up or down. Oops. You can adjust that up or down by adjusting the value in um, 
in your texture or your materials editor. And you'll notice this little chain right here. Um, this is showing as locked right now. You can also click on it and it'll um, basically show a broken chain. But what this is, is this allows you to lock or unlock your aspect ratio. So like for example, if you wanted to make this wider but not taller, um, like if I wanted this to be six feet instead of four feet, or maybe we'll do this the other way. That'll be a little bit better. So if we do six feet and four feet, you can see how you're getting um, basically some distortion in here in your image. So, and that's because we unlock the aspect ratio. So I'm just gonna set that back to what it was. Generally speaking, you're gonna wanna keep this locked um, because if you adjust one, you want the other one to adjust so you don't get that image distortion. So that allowed us to come in here and adjust the size of our material. And so if you were to come in here and you were to run a quick render of this, um, you can see how the size looks a lot more appropriate. So if I was to take this back to what it was, which is 10 inches, you can see how this doesn't really look like anything. It just kind of looks like an image that was kind of a, just kind of dropped on here and it doesn't really look like anything but if you bring that up to like a 48 by 48 you can see how this floor material suddenly looks a lot more realistic because it's sized properly and so now let's talk that's that's a quick way to resize materials within SketchUp um, with your V-Ray materials what I want to talk about now is I want to talk about positioning and rotating this material so let's say for example that I brought another material in here so I'm gonna reverse my faces and in this case we'll bring in We'll use one of these wood planks because their rotation is different. So I'm just gonna do the same thing where I right click and add that to my scene. I've got my face selected and I wanna apply material to selection. And so you can see how this kind of comes in the same way where it's tiled, it just comes in too small. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna use the eyedropper tool to select this material. Then we're gonna edit that and we're gonna bring that up to, we'll go back to 48 inches for right now. So you can see how this is a lot larger and a lot more realistic. So if we were to come in here and render this, um, this would show up as kind of a realistic material as well. So all of this usually comes in kind of mapped and V-Ray kind of has this set up a little bit where it looks okay. You might have to make some adjustments. But in this case, what the issue that we have is this wood material is running the wrong direction. So we don't necessarily want these to be running along the short distance here. We want them to be running along the long distance. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to use SketchUp's position texture tool in order to adjust this. So you can adjust your size really easily in your materials section, but if you want to adjust the orientation, you have to come in here and make some other changes. And I will note that the way we're gonna do this is only gonna work if you're clicking on a raw face. So if this was like group geometry, like if this was all in a group and then you applied that to the exterior of the group, this wouldn't work the same way. So the first thing we're gonna do though is assume this is a raw face, you can right click on this and go down to where it says texture and you can click the button for position. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring up SketchUp's position texture tool. And this is a series of tools built into SketchUp that you can use to adjust the way that materials sit on faces. And so you can see there's four different push pins in here. We're gonna focus on the red one and the green one. So the red one allows us to click and drag and move our material around. The green one allows you to click and drag and you can adjust both the rotation and also the scale of your uh, material. So in this case, I can use this to kind of manually adjust the scale of this material. And so the other thing this would allow us to do is this would allow us to rotate this material just like this. And you can see how it gives me kind of an inference point down here for what the rotation would be if it kept the same scale. So I can rotate this out first and then I can click and drag up and down to adjust the scale. So that's one way to adjust the way this material is running. The other easier way is to right click on the material and click rotate and you can quickly rotate this 90 or 180 degrees. So you can use this to rotate your materials around. And so now if I hit the enter key, you can see how now my wood grain or my wood material is running the right direction. So if I was to come back in here and render this again, you can see how now my materials in here is running the proper direction. It looks pretty good. It would look even better if I went in and adjusted my uh, lighting and that sort of thing, but it looks pretty good for right now. Well, now what we're gonna do though is one of the issues with the way this rendering is working right now is 
this wood material is just kind of off to the side. It's kind of split on the edge here. So let's say, for example, that I wanted this to more realistically match up with this edge. Well, what we would do, um, because right now this is kind of splitting a wood board in half, what we would do is we would right click on your texture and go back to position. And what you could do is you could single click on this, um, on this red push pin in order to set your pin location. So I'm gonna single click and I'm gonna place this on the border of this piece of wood. So in this case, I'm gonna place this right here on this edge, kind of right in the middle of this split. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this over so that this split is right on the edge here. So now your wood piece on this side is actually right on the edge of your face. You can use this to position things so that they actually start in a realistic way. And the other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could also use the rotate function or the scale function to kind of scale this outward a little bit. So if you wanted this to end on one of these gaps as well, you could just kind of click and drag this out and hit the enter key and you can see how now this material fits nicely on this face. And so if I was to run a render of this, I think this looks really good with the way that we've kind of placed this. So you can use this to adjust the way different materials work in here. Now, I will say this doesn't work as well for UV mapping. We'll have to talk about that in a different video. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Um, what tips do you have for moving materials around in V-Ray? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering tutorials every week. As always, always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.